Hello, everybody. I'm not sure if you're here for uh, DRA or Kubernetes resources, or you just you know sort of found a hole because of the coat check, which is right over there. Everybody getting ready to get going back. Some dynamic allocation of listeners, maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm Mike Brown. Uh, unfortunately, if you're looking for Alexander, he could not come. Okay, uh, he's st stuck over in the EU. Um, but if you can, uh, if you need to talk to Alexander about the DRA ar architecture work that he's been working on, please contact him. We'll have some links at the end. No, nope. days are long past, right? Uh, Kubernetes, it, it, for me, it seems like it's still very new. Um, but we've done some of these things and it's been around for a couple of years and we're ready to do some, some updates. Um, if you know me, I'm a maintainer of ContainerD and OCI and the Kubernetes Cry API. Um, we work a lot with the Cryo team. We make sure that we do device management support, at least in a compatible way, um, so that when you're schedulers or whatnot, throw things over to a container runtime. It doesn't matter if it's going to be us or the cryo team. Uh, that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, again, if you know CSI device plugins and that kind of stuff, there's been modifications to it to support CDI. Um, but for the most part, uh, it, it's been consistent, right? The the, the resource management inside of Kubernetes, you, if you want a GPU, you say, I want GPU, GPU number one. And if another pod needs GPU number one, you're sort of waiting, or you have to scale out and go to another node where another, that GPU one is available, okay? Um, so this, this demand on accelerator devices because of AI and other, other things that are going on, I say confidential containers, there, there's this expectation uh, that you're going to be able to get an isolated set of memory, an isolated set of CPUs that are secure in confidential containers, and then you have the opposite over where, when you're trying to do inferencing and it's all in one company and you want to be able to share across all these pods the GPUs that are available on that host, okay? Um, but if you don't use something like uh, batching technology, uh, then you might get stuck because your pods aren't going to be able to run that host without a lot more resources. Um, and because you're having to pull all these additional resources in, there's a lot of power management problems. Um, we want to be green. We want to share these resources. If you only want a slice of a GPU for a small period of time, we should be able to share it, right? So th those are some of these goals here. As well as with the enclaves, we want to be able to isolate certain tasks in a VM, for example. World is changing, big hardware changes. You guys have probably heard about performance cores, um, physical groups, uh, L2 caches, L3 caches, CXL caches, new, new techniques for being able to have memory being piped around inside of a, inside of a host or in, in these hopes could be vertical scaled or horizontally scaled. Um, the new memory modules are like SNC supports RAID 0, so you can actually do slicing, uh, get a lot faster memory, okay? A lot of things that we've had in the, in the mainframes for a long time, um, but now it's coming, coming to the PC architectures and stacks and racks. If you're interested in CXL or anything like this, you know, please come up after, the, after this discussion. So how do we deal with this new, this new complex world where sometimes I want to isolate more, sometimes I need to share, and I don't have enough abstractions at the Kubernetes API level to really be able to explain this, right? We need a, we need a topology, we kind of aware managers, aware CRD, if you will. Um, we need new, new ideas for how to tell these schedulers <laughs> And, and, you know, accelerators to make them work in this new, you know, it, it's not Nginx anymore, right? You're not just running Nginx with, you know, with all resources available to, to it. Okay. Um, the other part down here at the bottom where it says, 
<coughs> where we're adding uh, GPUs that have 32 gigabytes of memory, same, same kind of thing is, is applied here. Um, LLMs require many, many gigabytes of memory. If, it, if you say, I want a GPU, you need to be able to say, I need a GPU that has 128 gigabytes of RAM, please. And if you don't have that ability, it, and it's only set up so far to, you know, to run a web service and a host, then it's, it's not quite atomic enough. It's, it's, you, know, you don't really have this, a, way to, a way to specify this in the Kubernetes API, at least not without doing your own custom controllers. So this is a, a set of features that we're currently working on, okay? Uh, we've got a DRA driver that, and a DRA technology that went into alpha, and it looks like it might get reverted. We'll see. <coughs> Hopefully it won't get reverted, um, but we're, we're looking for people to help us integrate this, this DRA functionality with some of the you know, autoscalers, uh, like Cluster Autoscaler. If, if they decided that they want to open up another node, we need to tell them that before a priori that no, we want to, we want to run more resources because we're only using 10% of, of, the, of the resources that are needed for that particular class of application. And I'm, I'm, I just brought a new word, class of application, right? We'd like to be able to obfuscate, if, if you will, a little bit the, on the pod spec request that you want to be able to do, you want a certain class of resources that has been predefined for this particular application type and, and that, that gets somehow translated down at the bottom layers to the devices and the configurations for the, the devices that integrate with each other at, at the bottom end when it actually runs the containers and the pods, okay? I, I've been working on this thing called NRI for a while um, with the, I like the, <laughs> I need a drink. So NRI plugins is, is a common device API and or daemon API that we're hosting in the container runtimes that allows somebody like NVIDIA, you know, or AMD or Intel to, to walk in, or any other type of device, networking devices to walk in and say, when this class of application runs on on this host, I want you to allocate this network device. I want you to allocate a slice of a GPU with a certain amount of memory, or, or it's confidential containers. I, I want to be able to allocate a, a, a new layer that's isolated across, you know, with a certain amount of memory that's attached and isolated from other tasks in the system. Okay, and NRI plugins allows us, allows these device manufacturers to do that. Um, so we're pretty excited about it. Uh, okay. It, it, it utilizes all kinds of technology. You, when you create a container, there's a certain sequence of steps, you know, create, start, run, stop, you know, CRUD operations. And we, at that point in time, we have access to all of the container, OCI specification modifications, the mounts that that are being created by, you know, Kubernetes, ev everything is there, and we can pass that over to these plugins so that they can augment, enhance, modify, okay, the OCI specification before you start the container, or after it starts, after it stops the container, it knows, okay, uh, this guy's no longer using that percentage of the resource. And because it's a class, it knows how to deal with the other containers, the other processes, the other pods, that are that we're sharing that resource, right? So if somebody was only getting 10% and it wanted a quality of service that was 15%, now that it's no longer 10 and we're splitting it 10 ways, now we can go ahead and give this other person 15%. And this resource manager device plugin will be able to integrate with the node resource topology manager, uh, setting up there in the API server um, and do the notifications telling it you know, what's changed. So that it can tell the autoscaler, hey, I don't need another node because this one just went down. You probably heard about plug events. This is like plug events on steroids, right? Because this device manager plugin is using TTRPC. We're directly engaged with, with this manager and he will know exactly what's happened. The task took an oom. Oops. Immediately, because we get the exit 
code and all that sort of thing. You know, it's an oom this time, sorry. The device manager will know and he'll be able to you know, re go ahead and get rid of all that memory, wipe it because it was in a secure enclave, okay? DRA, uh, what, what is possible with a device plugin, right? With, with this device plugin model, now, now containers that are in different pods can share the same device. Nobody's excited. All right, all right. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on, come on. One, one GPU being shared by two, con by two containers, one in pod A, one in pod B, with the same class, okay? Um, so you can now have multiple pods and a group of pods either running a scheduled set of you know, transactions or whatnot, but that all have to access the same, the same device, right? Be it memory device, be it CUDA device, you know, AMD supports CUDA on PyTorch. Uh, if we, if we, as long as the devices understand the class and they've got a device manager plugin running as an NRI plugin, then they'll have this immediate notification and be able to very quickly update and allocate the resources dynamically for these containers. Oh, in CDI, yeah, it's in container D1.7. We shipped it a year ago. So yeah, it's been around. It, it's been, it, we, when we shipped it in 1.7 in container D, we, we did highlight it as experimental. Um, and it has been modified quite a couple times since then. Um, but we are GAA in it um, in container D 2.0, uh, probably in March, maybe February. We're not sure. I think 2.14 is the current date that we're scheduled for GAA. Uh, container D 2.0, but um, just a couple days ago, we did go ahead and make Container D 2.0 beta available, okay? And this, and this is available today, okay? Additionally, Cryo, same, same device model, same NRI plug-in model we're, we're sharing together. We, we even have a, well, that's, come up and ask about it, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain some of, the, some of the history that we've had for, with NRI and Run-C plugins and things like that. I've been working with Murnau Patel on, on this particular area of the specification. And, you know, Run-C hooks, for example. Probably seven years ago, we're sitting around. To, okay, I'm, okay, never mind. I'll tell you later. Okay. A uh, little bit more on NRI, this, you know, high-level architecture. Picture we, we talked about a little bit. There's a, there's a config for the plugins that get loaded in the container runtimes on, on init. We only, check, we only check once for new plugins, but you can always restart Container D. And when you restart Container D, it automatically integrates and reconnects to Kubelet. So if you had to change a, pl a device plugin, you could do that without actually bringing any of your pods down. It would, should work fine, okay? Uh, so a little design here. Again, you can modify your OCI specification for each container. Bit of an eye chart here. We've got a lot, we're showing a lot of the NRI plugins that are currently available. All right. If y'all want to come up and talk about them, we can. Take a pause. Anybody have any intermediate questions on NRI or anything we've talked about so far? You raise your hand or walk up to the mic. No, we're good. So, QoS class resources. This is this is something that is a little bit different than the dynamic resource allocation stuff that we've been talking about. And, and the reason it's different is because quality of service class resources or things that we can tell the node resource uh, discovery agent what is available in your system. This is closer to, okay, I've got a GPU, right? And that GPU can be, can be published and then the scheduler can look at what's available on the node and make decisions on whether or not you're going to deploy a pod to a device based on the type of, the type of thing that's available. But now this class resource is, is sli slightly different. Again, we, we talked a little bit earlier about that you could have a, a class definition and that class definition could be for dynamic resources. Well, it all, could also be for static resources that are available in the in the container, in the host, and, and we can make those available, and we can make decisions ba based on either bandwidth or, or whatnot of that device uh, 
can now, the, the bandwidth of the device can now be published up into this NRT. We've got node resource topology manager, manager CRD, where we can publish additional information about the, the, the GPU, for example, or the type of memory, what kind of, how much bandwidth that has, and then that can enhance the existing architecture of Kubernetes. I don't, when we, when we talk about things that might be a little iffy, this isn't one of them, I don't think, okay? But it, it's very, very important um, to enhance these, these class resources and, and have a little bit cleaner API, if we believe, at the pod level. Okay. And again, the architecture, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty clean. Um, the runtime NRI plugins can enforce the quality of service. We talked a little bit about quality of service earlier. And if, that, if quality of service is something you want, then you should be able to define that okay, in, a, in an NRT with some kind of specification, and that, that will be the class you ask for, and then it'll, it'll flow through the scheduler, and Kubelet will say, hey, you know, let's, create, let's create this pod with this quality of service, and then the, if we get a reject, that can come back up the standard process, right? Sorry, that quality of service is not available, right? Although the, we should have been able to integrate with the, the, the scheduler earlier to not actually schedule something that wasn't available, but as you know, we have noisy neighbors, right? A noisy neighbor is somebody that's taking up all the resources all of a sudden, right? He goes, goes to max memory, and we thought we had some shared memory, and maybe it wasn't going to be a problem, or we've got a hard drive that's getting filled up because all well, this 20 gigabyte LLM just got pulled down as being uncompressed, and the resource is getting full. So, oh, sorry, for that particular device, we can't, we have, our quality of service has gone down. So, so again. This is, this is our, our, our vision of the future, but it's already available in alpha, and, and we believe it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it. This is a request to get involved. Um, I don't know if hands, anybody work with devices? Yes. OK. Eh, maybe, maybe about 10. So I expect you guys will probably be coming up here and talk, talking with Evan or myself about, about this. Um, if you're interested in the NRI stuff, it goes beyond just resource management. Um, the, at the NRI, because we're hooking into at the OCI CRUD level, if you will, you can actually do additional logging types. You can do forks, T's. Um, you could just check for certain things that are happening for security reasons or performance reasons, right? And, and again, because it's a, a very low level, um, you know, Unix socket connection without the whole G gRPC, you know, baggage. It's it's fairly quick, and, and you'll be able to have that daemon that's just looking for a particular class or a particular you know OCI spec uh, field like a volume name or something like that. Okay, and then run your extra log. Okay, but again, so that that's it. Um, we can we can take questions. And I have Evan here. <laughs> Evan's one of the architects of this. Okay. Yeah, or I can just repeat it anyway. Hey, so, um, so I came here wondering, we have a constant issue with our um, what we do for integration environments, we have spiking loads. So we have to allocate more CPU and memory than we actually need at runtime. Would this be able to help us in that case? For, for spiking loads? Yeah, like when it starts up, it just needs too much CPU, CPU but just for like a fret for a couple seconds and then it just uses a little bit of CPU. I, I mean, I don't think anybody's really talked about spike cases yet, have they? Or? I don't, I don't see why we couldn't include in the topology a definition of, you know, spike availability if the, if the CPU is not fully, you know, allocated already for, by quality of service. I don't see why we couldn't allow one to spike, okay, or we could knack it, 
It yeah. depends. So I don't know if you, if, did you want a filter or some? Just some way to say like, just borrow this for another time, for a little bit of time and give it back so that we can just have a little bit of, you know, resource limitations. Because we're running into like, we're requesting too high of a limits and we're trying to, you know, pack too many things into one cluster. So it's just trying to figure out, is there a solution for that coming down the road? Well, th this is actually designed to handle that, I guess is the pr appropriate way to say it, as opposed to you no know, insufficient resource available, autoscaler, please give me another node, right, is the current answer, I believe. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think this is actually designed to fix that problem. Awesome. Uh, would the NRI um, plugin be a way to do like CPU set pinning without having to have like the guaranteed QoS at the schedule level? Because we have issues with setting CPU limits and CFS not playing very well. Um, but if we introduce a sidecar oh. or anything that like breaks the guaranteed QoS there, we'd like to still like kind of give you an integer CPU amount. Yes and no. Um, it's not designed currently to support metrics or, you know, stats. We, we, we haven't hooked in stats or metrics. We just flow them up to Kubelet to manage. I'm just looking to, at the, at the C group level when you're creating at C group, just, at like, C group just like CPU set for, so that I get okay. one dedicated CPU for yes. that. Yes. That would work? It, it, it would. Um, C group C2 is also fairly new and there's been a, an enhancement in, in run C, the next version of run C that's going out. Um, I believe once that happens, then we should be able to hook that in right. with another quality service and a node resource topology manager, just make sure. And yeah, you could do it certainly with the, uh, you, could, you could check to see if that C, that C group is actually defined in the, in the spec with a plugin. Um, you could see if somebody's asked for it. Okay. Uh, and you. then you could knack it. You could pull it out or, yeah, and reject the container if you wanted to from NRIS. Thanks. I had a quick question about, so the resource is actually managed by the operating system, even in case of GPU, et cetera, right? So what guarantees can we provide? So when we are giving us an API saying you can set a limit, say in GPU can say four workloads can share, et cetera, we can't really provide any guarantees. So what's the, yeah. what, what so are you, we doing? So you, you want to know how the magic works <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, okay. So d down in the guts of this thing, um, we have the ability to not, not only talk to the resource managers who have device integration capabilities, but we can also, okay, run code either before, in the init container, before we transfer control ownership and run your command. We can also hook in and run code, okay, after the container's been, start at, been created, but before it's been started. And the same thing, when it fails, we can run code. Okay, so because of that, because we can actually run as you in the container, we can do lots of fun stuff. But I it can also be misused by users who think they are better than, say, CFS or what the U operating system does, right? Oh, yeah. We, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll specify for admins and security professionals where these configs are located, okay. um, how they can be manipulated. By default, this is off in container D, for example. Okay. okay, okay. Um, so yeah. yeah. But Thank but you. you can enable it, you know, with the switch, with the right if you have root access. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, pros and cons. Uh -huh. come on. No more? Okay, well go ahead, Dr. Max. Dr. Max is our Quantum, <laughs> you, uh, a quantum you, expert. You're making my, my question more difficult. Um, so is, it, is this going to make DRA, uh, Kubernetes, useful for AI? Very much so. Very, very much but so. By, Kevin is not here, let me be uh, but bit Evan more is. Is it going to give um, the work on a node full access to the GPU? as if Kubernetes didn't exist? It's been a big problem. Getting, getting the, the GPUs to running at full load has been a problem, right? Uh, 
you, you have to allocate GPUs for new nodes, even though the GPU is only being run at 5%, for example. Um, Evan can probably answer that question a little bit too. Evan from NVIDIA. Yeah, hi. Uh, so just to clarify, um, once the container has access to the devices, uh, it's running with access to those devices without interaction with a kubelet. So, or, or Kubernetes at all, any, any Kubernetes objects or components because you, you inject the device nodes and the libraries into the container and so it is as if it is running as if you'd started that container by yourself, right? So if that is your question, whether you'd be able to use it, the, the entire GPU without giving some away to, to Kubernetes, something like that, like that's already what happens. Yeah, so basically, the, the question is whether or not Kubernetes will be in the way, or is it just doing the work to allocate and then getting out? Yes, so it's, it's doing exactly that. It's uh, depending on your your request or the resources that you have requested for whatever workload it is that you want to run. The idea is that Kubernetes, the scheduler, makes the, in, possibly, in, in, depending on what uh, mechanism you're using, um, makes the decision of which node or set of nodes something needs to land on. And once that happens, your process has direct access to those resources. So once that's started, then it's no longer involved. So it's just a placement and scheduling problem, effectively. And a little more specific, too, if, if the, another pod wanted to come in and it was the same class requesting, then it could join. Uh, yeah, yes, so if, if you are using something that allows sharing, then you could, could allow multiple uh, processes to share the resources, or you could select, I think the current model is basically uh, exclusive access, right? Unless we allow oversubscription to some extent, but um, basically, if you're requesting a single GPU, you have access to that GPU and no other processes. Because uh, Kubernetes will also like does the accounting, uh, the Kubernetes does the accounting in terms of how many of those devices are available, and if it's been allocated, then it's not no longer allocatable to any other other processes or other jobs that need access to it. Okay. Then, last question: Is it? Any kind of GPUs, meaning that is there a, weak, is there a specific connection to Numa, uh, CUDA or any specific interface to a GPU, or can I plug in, let's say, my Max GPU that I'm working on? Yeah, of course, the device manufacturer is going to have to have a, a device manager that like a to do anything specific. But today, with PyTorch, we actually already have a nice little layer where. If, if you want a GPU, you, you select CUDA, for example, as a default, but if you wanted to run on AMD Radeons, then they support CUDA as well. I see. And so therefore, once you've requested the GPU for your pod, then that would already today be allocatable for both AMD and for, right? But just so for that pod. allocation will be independent of GPUs, but as it, my workload will need to know that I requested Max GPU. Oh yeah, the, the great, the great, new, the good news about all this, right, is when you're inside the container, when you're inside your code, if you want to say if MPS, you're going to be able to say if MPS. I see. Okay. Right, and we, we as a container runtime won't know anything except the platform that was selected was, right. and the class was right. a certain, you know, a, a GPU class. You want care also, basically. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's six minutes. All right. Ed, come on up. Thanks.